Hi, my name is Dr. Raja Nan Ahmed and I'm a psychiatrist and I work in UK. This video is specifically for the international medical graduates who are asking me one common question these days, which is around uh, how to choose the best areas for training. Because right now a training round is going on. I'm recording this video in February of 2024 and people are have, who have taken MSRA specifically around GP and psychiatry they like to know that where are the best places to train, where should they rank their uh, their training places and which, which places they should avoid. So I will share some knowledge here about how best to choose a training placement or how best to choose a geographical area according to your needs. So when I was starting my journey in UK as a doctor uh, and I, I had the same questions in, in my mind that where should I live and train, what are the best places, which area will suit me the most. So I can uh, talk about two different aspects to this. Number one in geographical area that how do you choose a geographical area and you know what sort of things you need to consider. And number two is how to look for the best training places. So in relation to the geographical area, when you are choosing uh, area, you're actually choosing initially a deanery. So there are 20 different deaneries in the UK, and some of them are based in the south of England, some in, in Wales is a deanery, Scotland is a deanery, some is then based in the Midlands, some are actually north of England. So when actually you are choosing a deanery, you're also choosing a geographical area. So while choosing a geographical location, there are four different considerations which people would come up with. Number one is if they have some family or friends or social links to an area. Number two would be that they personally like an area. Number three would be the, uh, which is very important, is the cost of living, that how much it costs to live in that area, what are the red rents and all of that like. Number four would be school, especially if you are a parent and you have children who are school going, you would like to know that which areas will have the best school. So when you're choosing a geographical location, these are the four things people normally consider. So if we talk about the first two, number one would be the family and social links. So you may already have some family living in UK. So if I have a sister living in Manchester, I might sort of think that, you know, maybe I should live near her. So I have some social contact with, with her. If I have some friends who are already working in an area and they like I like the area where I go and visit them, that might become my choice that I want to live around them as well, because then I can have some social contacts as well. Number two would be that what area do you personally like? You know, some people like big cities. Some people, maybe they go to Manchester and think this is a very good city. I live, I like to live near it because it's multicultural and all that. Uh, some people like the south of England. They might feel that this is more posh, you know, although it's more expensive, but I like this, the lifestyle around here. Some people like their rural setting in UK that they may think, you know, the cities are too much for them. Maybe if they're living in a semi-rural area, Outside the big city, that is something that will uh, that 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 is something that they will like. So, so personal personally liking area and then having family link and social links. This is something to consider when you're choosing a geographical location. Now, the next two things, which are around the cost of living and the schools, and this is something you can actually look up on the internet, and I'll show you some sites and how can you actually search and find out which is the. Uh, uh, cheaper area to live in at in terms of cost of living and which are the more expensive area so i'll share you share my slide with you to see if 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 you can understand you know how to actually search for these this sort of information uh, so the first website you can see here is the website which is from hee uh, the higher education england and they are actually showing what are the different deaneries available in uk and what are the different trusts within the deanery the regional boundaries since they are in 2019 and these boundaries can change with time as well. So if there's a new map, they will up update that as well. So this is a map of uh, UK, you can see, um, and especially this is a map of England and there's, you can see that how these areas are, uh, are given different names and different uh, uh, numbers here. So you can find this map on HE website. It's the easy to find the regional boundaries of deaneries and different trusts. So you can see which area it belongs where. And then you have another website from again from HEE. This is about local office and deanery. So in here, if you are specifically looking for, for England, I like to show you this. Uh, number one, England will, will have four different areas. There's South, uh, then you have North, then have Midlands, and then you have London. Uh, so if you open the South, you will see these different areas of or deanery. You know, you have Kent, Surrey, Sussex, uh, South Wend, Peninsula. Then you have the Severn region, Thames Valley and Wessex. Uh, this is another deanery. It's a single deanery that has a, a lot of areas. 
Then you have Midlands, which will have East Midlands, West Midlands, East of England. This is uh, quite a big area as well in itself. So big cities will come into that. Then you have North of uh, England, which will cover North East, uh, North Cumbria, which is uh, a sort of a rural area. Then you have North West, West uh, which will have uh, Manchester in it. And then you have the Yorkshire and Humber. So you can actually go on these links and see which areas they are covering, which big cities are available in this, this deanery. So if you're specifically aiming for one big city, like for example, Manchester, then Northwest would be something you've been interested in. If you are aiming for a rural area, for example, uh, and with cheaper cost of living, Northeast would be one of those areas. Yorkshire is uh, where there's a lot of ethnic uh, uh, population you know if you want to of to if you want to live there then you have uh, midlands uh, west midlands um, is very famous in east midlands will have different areas east of england which uh, covers cambridge and all that so you know by doing your research a little bit around these deaneries and which catchment area they're covering and which geographical area they're covering and where do you like to live is quite helpful now the sec the next uh, website i'll show you is important this is uh, something which a lot of IMGs will worry about. And this is about the uh, cost of living. Um, that where is the cheapest area to live? So if you go on internet and just type cost of living map or cost of living uh, guide, you know, then you will find that similar sort of maps uh, where you can actually see and zoom in and see which areas are actually expensive to live in and which areas are cheap to live in. So you can see, you know, the red, the darker areas are actually more expensive to live in. In general, generally speaking, the south of England uh, is actually more expensive to live in. As you are moving towards Midlands and Manchester and uh, sort of north, the cost of living become cheaper. But even in these areas, you can find some areas where, where cost of living is a bit higher. So these kind of maps can actually help you understand where would be cheaper to rent, where would be cheaper to live, because renting and accommodation is one of the main costs that goes out of your uh, uh, your monthly salary. So, for example, if you're living in South, just to give an example, the if you can afford a one-bedroom flat in South, the same kind of amount can get you a three-bedroom house if you're living in Midlands and above. So, you know, cost of living and standard of living, that also comes into play when you're choosing an area and geographical location. Now, this one is actually an interesting uh, one as well. You know, you can find this sort of thing uh, online that uh, if you would like to see a snapshot of where the most ethnic population of UK is living, then how can you find that out? You know, if you want to live in a predominantly white area or if you want to live in an area which is, which is more multicultural. So in this sort of, you will find maps around as well. Generally speaking, the bigger cities in UK are quite multicultural. So uh, areas like Manchester, you know, they will be very, very, very much multicultural, Leeds, uh, Yorkshire area. Uh, but if you are, you know, this sort of map can actually help you to understand where most uh, multicultural uh, areas are in, in the UK. This is something that is, uh, that is, that counts because a lot of people say that they don't want to live in an area where they can't find any local grocery shops from their uh, uh, from from their country you know that kind of thing that these will be actually helpful so this next uh, website is around the schools and you can find that very easily on internet if you if you type uh, where are the best schools in uk uh, then you can find interactive maps showing you that where the education standards are higher according to the offset rating so this is just a website showing some outstanding schools uh, uh, primary school in the UK and you know this sort of map you can actually zoom in as well in different areas and find out you know where these schools are what what has been uh, rated in as as an outstanding and if you like to live around that and you know catchment area schools are important if you are sending your children to a particular school so this is this sort of exercise is useful for uh, parents who have children and they, they want to send their children to outstanding schools and you can see you know that you can see where these outstanding schools are uh, around the UK, which areas, and when you're choosing the deaneries and you map it around it, then you will be able to choose those area, areas accordingly.
another thing people will ask me that you know that's fine about the geographical area but i am an international medical graduate i do not have a particular area that i like i like to i can live anywhere but i just like to have higher standard of training and where are the pockets or where are the deaneries which highest with higher standard of training now this one sometimes is difficult to answer because deanery itself is a big unit you know so within deanery uh, you have different trust and within trust you have different rotations so just because you're in a, in one deanery that doesn't mean the whole deanery is good you may have some ex extraordinary placements and extraordinary places to train there you may not have some good uh, trust there as well so you have to think as a deanery as a big geographical thing and within that you will have different trusts and different rotation but then how do you choose and how do you find out where are, where are the best deaneries if you are if you are not worried about the geographical location and you can move anywhere so in that i think the best guide would be the gmc training survey and i'll show you the website in a minute um, the second thing you can do is to find out people who are working there so for example if you are interested in psychiatry and you like to see how are the training satisfaction in the in uh, northwest you know near manchester so you can go on the social media groups and find trainees who are actually working in northwest and ask them directly what has been their experience what were the good things what are the bad things but you know sometimes those trainees will have only view of, because they are just trained in one place they cannot compare it with another place you know they might say to you well actually i have a i have a bad placement but that doesn't mean that other places are not having similar sort of placements so i think i still think the best way to actually research that is to look at the gmc training survey very carefully because what gmc is doing is every year year on and year you know what they do is every year they send a training survey out to all the trainees in the uk and ask them different questions about the standard of their training and their happiness and all that and then they produce a report and that report is uh, outside you know in on on the website and the website is very interactive and you can actually go and look around different areas of uk you can find out what is the training satisfaction level in particular area what is the training set satisfaction in in and particular specialty so all of this information can be found and even information like you know uh, what is the pass rate of for exam so as a trainee you have to pass the exams as well so what is the pass rate of mrc psych or mrc gp in a particular area where are the places where IMGs are, are uh, doing exams well? You know, those sort of information, a lot can be actually found on their website. So I'll show you that website, which is very interactive and see if you can, if you can play, play around with it and use it as well. So if you go on uh, internet and type uh, GMC training survey in the search engine, you know, this will be the first hit and you go into turn training survey. So in the training survey, you have two different things. You will have a summary of a report, which is 2023. And then you have access to an online reporting tool. I think this is where uh, the website become interactive. If you go in this access to the online reporting tool, and then you'll see different options here, you know, so what sort of report you're looking for. The trainees, there's a training survey, there's a survey for trainers as well, there's some enhanced monitoring uh, as well, then some reports around as well. So for example, if we go into this, the training survey, so they will say that you can search by a, a program, a post by specialty and by site, program group by site and the, and the site itself. So if you are looking specifically for the sites, you know, that would be different. If you're looking, looking for a specific program, if you're looking for something else, like here you can say, they will say that you can search via trust and health board as well. You can search via deaneries, uh, program by deaneries and offices as well. And then there's some more options as well here. This is a foundation. So let us go into the deaneries just to uh, give you a very simple examples of how you can look into different programs and deaneries and the overall satisfaction scores of the doctors. So let's go into, into this one. Now, you can see the website is loading and this is loading an interactive uh, uh, thing. Now, look at this. Uh, they are talk, talking about different programs. So they are actually, um, here you can select different specialties. So let's say if I'm looking for psychiatry training, so I can come to core psychiatry training. I can click that up. And it will update, the website will update itself. So now we are talking about core psychiatry training and these are the different deaneries here. So the first deanery they always show, um, 
is around the, the training with the army, which uh, the IMDs are not doing, you know, they're going through other deaneries. So this is, so for example, this is Health Improvement uh, Wales, which is the our deanery in Wales. And you can see this course uh, of different domains, how the trainees in Wales have, have recorded their satisfaction. So there's overall satisfaction score, 2019, 21, 22, 23. And you can see if, if the overall satisfaction is increasing or reducing. Very important question, clinical supervision, uh, reporting system, out of hours, handover, supportive environment. So all you can see that they are they have been scored out of 100 and you can compare it from 2019, 2021, 2022, 2023. So this is just one deanery. So you if you come down, you can find East Midlands here and then you can see. So if something is reported low, uh, lower than um, average, you know, they will be in red and if they're higher, then it will be in green. So you can come to East of England and see the scores here of different things, same headings, overall satisfaction, how was the clinical supervision? And you can then see also see that if from 2019 in the last three or four years, is this deanery improving or actually they are getting worse? So, you know, all the deaneries, all the different, different geographical areas will be here. So like you can see the here, we're talking about uh, health education in Northeast. And you can see here in 2019, they were averaging above the national average. Uh, and then, you know, this is the 2023 score. So by looking at these different scores, you can see how satisfied are the trainees. I think this is a much better way to, to look at the information because if you're just talking to one person, they might just give you impression of how they felt in that particular rotation or that particular area or that particular year. But by doing this, you can actually look into a much more in-depth information about a deanery and an area. So this is just one way of searching, you know, and this these are the the overall marks, you know, where you can actually go into this and look into much detail, play around with this website and you will find a lot of information where the problems are, where people are happy, where people are passing more exams and all those sort of things, which is uh, important when you're choosing uh, a deanery. So I hope this was a useful exercise and I have just talked about how to choose the geographical location, the things to consider, your uh, the personal ideas of where you like to live, uh, if you have family support. And then if you have children, they look for school. Uh, that's then one of the most important considerations is cost of living and quality of life where, where it, it would be best because the salaries in UK would be similar, you know, as a trainee. And then you can look into the quality of training information that how, how it has been reported by the junior doctors in training in that particular deanery, in that particular program, in that particular specialty. And you can find that information from GMC survey. So once you have this information, I think you will have a better idea of which areas to choose and which areas to live and which area you like to train in. And then of course you can contact people through social media and find people who are actually working on those deans, working in the deanery as a junior doctor and ask for their, their impression as well. So I hope this was useful and I hope this will help you to choose your uh, particular specialty and particular geographical area and deanery. Thank you very much for listening.